hello to all my friends out there and hello to all the children in the world hello to the dogs that follow me and hello to the cats okay this video is the white stag by Kate Serapy Serity and this is part two this is the second half of chapter one and the story is getting good you guys Okay, first we'll take a look at this because this has played big into the story. We have a horn, we have a club, and we have a bow and arrow. And this is the second part of chapter two. Hanor and Magyard leapt from their saddles and ran to old Nimrod. He embraced them silently. After a moment, Hanor lifted his head and looked intently into his father's face. Father, you are pale and trembling. What has happened? He made a sweeping gesture with his hands. The people here, the path, the fire, it met us far beyond the hills. Tell us the meaning of it. Old Nimrod smiled. smiled. I got to move my... I will tell you, my son, but I see you have had a good hunt. You have brought game. Our people are hungry. Let us have a feast. At his signal, men sprang forward and unloaded the game from the saddles. Soon, huge fires were burning, and the smell of the roasted meat of deer, wild boar, and rabbits filled the air. The worst pangs of hunger appeased. The people began to sing and laugh. By the time of the the full round by the time the full round moon sailed into view, it looked down on a happy, boisterous scene. Hunger and terror were forgotten once more. Young men of the tribe were dancing around the fire, the wild dance of the lucky hunters. Women sang and children scampered around like bouncing rabbits. Only old Nimrod was quiet and thoughtful. He had not touched food or drink but listen intently to talk of Hanor and Magyar and answer their eager questions. When finally the merrymaking passed its peak, he walked slowly up the altar stairs. He held up his hand, commanding silence. Then he began to speak. My people, you have seen the sun set on this day, portentous that it will be remembered long after we who have been part of it are dust and ashes. Before the pale white sister of the sun disappears behind the mountains, you will swear obedience to your new leaders, Hanor and Magyar. It is seldom that Handur, the powerful, speaks as clearly as he has spoken tonight, so clearly that even a child could understand it. his words. All of you have sir, seen and heard, and all of you will obey. There is one thing you must know. Hanor and Magyar will tell you the story of their travels of seven moons. It is final proof that they are chosen to be your leaders. His two sons stepped up and stood by his side. They were very tall and powerful, but old Nimrod towered over them as a majestic old oak. Uh, towers over the young saplings. At the side of the three gigantic figures illuminated in the pale white light of the moon, a murmur of awe arose from the crowd. Then Hanor began the story. Seven moons ago, a miraculous white stag appeared on, on the crest of the hill. He was as white as driven snow and bigger than any stag any stag ever seen by men. Let me try to find a picture of him. Here he is. Seven moons ago, a miraculous white stag appeared. 
on the crest of the hill. He was white as a driven snow and bigger than any stag ever seen by men. He waited until we got close to him, so close to him that we thought we could touch him with our hands. Then he spun around and leaped away as lightly as sunlight leaps over running water. His legs were slim as branches as of white birch and he ran swifter than the, the wind. All night he ran through the forests and plains, across the rivers and over the mountains, and we rode after him as we had never ridden before. The hooves of our horses never touched the ground. We soared over valleys and left mountains far be below us. When morning came, the white stag stopped on the edge of a misty blue lake, and he stopped. as he stopped, our horses fell back exhausted. They stumbled and snorted and would not move again. The white stag pawed the ground where he stood and shook his antlers, then disappeared in the floating mist over the water. All that day we searched for him. We did not see him again. We only found the place where he had pawed the ground. There were seven deep rifts in the ground, cut deep and wide, as no living beasts could cut them, and we saw the blue lake was full of fish. The green meadows alive with rabbits, forests with teeming with Deer and other big game. There were trees heavy with fruit and the air was sweet with the breath of beautiful flowers. We saw that in the land there would be room and food for all of us. We rested there for a short time, then we started back. The white stag had led us there in one night. It took seven moons to come back again. While Hanor told his stories, the listeners had left their fires and the crowd closer and closer until they were standing in a tight ring around the altar. Now old Nimrod pointed to the highest step, so close to the still smoking glowing embers that he seemed enveloped in a red mist. His face was pale and haggard, and there, and there was a far-seen piercing look in his eyes. In one hand he held his war club, in the other hand his bow and arrow. These he held out to his sons, who kneeling before him took them from his hands. Then he spoke, My work is done. Tomorrow you will go forth to lead your people towards the promised land. Twin eagles of Hadur, who Nor and Magyar go and fulfill the will of God. His eyes closed as he uttered these last words. Then, with a crash like that of a fallen tree, he fell on the highest step of the altar. The crowd gasped in horror. Women wailed and children started to cry, but the sounds of horror and mourning were drowned by a tremendous shout of the young men, warriors, and hunters. Long live Hanor, Hanor and Magyar, twin eagles of Hador. The two brothers remained kneeling by their dead father's side. Long minutes. Then they arose. Magyar turned to the tribe. Light the torches of the dead, he commanded. One by one, the warriors, the warriors stepped to the dying embers and lighted pitch-coated torches. Soon there was hundreds of them burning around the altar. The whole valley seemed to flame once more, and black smoke coiled up towards upwards, blotting out the sky. Hunor and Magyar, each with a burning torch, stood by the body of Nimrod. 
Hunar lifted his voice. Light up the world, my torch. Shine brighter, O moon, stars, and sun. Hold a wake, a wake over Nimrod, mighty hunter before the Lord. Shed bitter t- tears, O cloud, soil, trees, and grass. Shed bitter tears for Nimrod, mighty hunter before the Lord. Bow your heads, all you living. Bow your heads to Nimrod, mighty God, mighty hunter before the Lord. Then cheer and dance and rejoice, all you living. Shine brighter, moon, stars, and sun. Cry tears of joy, clouds, soil, and trees, and grass. For now he is soaring over the happy meadows, for he is not taking shame but glory to lay before Hador, the powerful God. Each one repeated, He is taking not shame but glory to lay before Hador, the powerful God. Now, Hunar and Hunar and Magyar fastened their torches to the stones. All others were extinguished. Magnar stepped toward and cried, Move the mountains, men. Move the rocks and soil with your bare hands and build a mighty tomb for the mighty hunter. In the eerie light of the white moon flickering torches, the immense task began. Men tore boulders from the mountainside and rolled them towards the altar. Women and children carried clay from the river to their hands. Rocks were fitted together with clay until they formed a gigantic mound over the altar, a mound shaped like an inverted cup. tapering towards the top of a ho- of a hollow inside. Finally, there was only a little opening on the top through which the glow of the smoke of the torches poured. Only then did Hanor speak. Go and rest, brothers, until the sun comes up. With the sun, we shall go forth towards the west. The two brothers were left alone. They stayed by their father's grave for the rest of the night, watching the moon go down behind the hills, watching the final glow of the new day in the easterly sky. With the glowing light came sounds of the awakening camp. Magyar roused himself out of his deep thought and touched his brother's shoulder. The tribe is ready to go. We must go now. The women came first, leading leading the children. Everyone had a flower in her hand. Silently, they passed by the grave and dropped their flowers at its base. The men came next, leading their horses. Everyone stopped to the place to place a gift on the grave, an arrow, a wooden cup, a leather pouch, a favorite club. All passed, and slowly the caravan began to move westward, following the now blackened path of the fire. Hunor had shoulder Hunor then shouldered a huge square rock and walked slowly, laboriously to the top of the mount. Magyar followed. They rolled the rock over the opening, sealing it. Then they lifted their their hunting bugles to their lips, a proud, triumphant tune rent the still air and echoed through the mountainous a thousand mountains a thousandfold until its voice seemed to beat against the very sky, a bugle call of victory in last tribute to Nimrod, mighty hunter before the Lord. Okay, you guys, that's part two. I'll be back tomorrow with part three, and God bless you all.